Hello, hello, Mordimers here and welcome to the second day of the Earthings Masters semi-finals and I would like to show you the game between Daniil Dubov and Teymur Rajabov. Uh, Teymur Rajabov won the first mini-match. I show you uh, one of the games from the, the first day of the semi-finals. If you haven't seen, check it out. Uh, Daniil Dubov sacrificed the piece, uh, but it was not enough to beat Teymur Rajabov uh, and he lost the first mini-match and this is the second day and second mini match so Daniel Dubov has to win uh, just to take uh, the games to the playoffs and try to win there however in the first game he already lost and now he has three games and he has to get two and a half points out of three games so that's a pretty much very very dramatic and i would like to show you the game where daniel dubov is playing as black and Temur Rajabov opens with knight f3 we have knight f6 by Dubov and c4, so English opening and now b6, so Queen's Indian formation, uh, d4, pretty standard, bishop b7 and now g3. So uh, just for your information, Akiba Rubinstein was the first in the history uh, who actually brought the bishop to g2 just to make it opposite um, to the bishop on b7. This bishop on b7 can be a beast, so this was the very bright idea. As you see, 100 years later, it's still very popular, actually the most popular uh, way of dealing with this bishop on b7. We have g6, we have bishop g2, bishop g7, we have the castle, castle, knight c3, and now knight e4, uh, opening the diagonal for dark square bishops and actually exchanging uh, the knight. So knight e4, bishop e4, and now we have bishop e3 over protecting the pawn on d4 because now c5 is coming and this um, diagonal is a weakened uh, in this position of course for white is better to do nothing this pawn uh, is defended three times so even if the bishop takes the knight it's still enough um, to actually uh, protect that so we have queen d2 now making the battery preparing to uh, move the bishop to h6 and exchange the dark square bishop uh, we have d6 setting up this uh, very solid pawn structure uh, and now bishop h6 as planned. We have knight d7 and now instead of taking the bishop it's always the time to do that as the rook on f8 uh, it's still over there so you cannot bring the bishop to h8 because you're gonna lose the exchange. Uh, first we have rook f to d1. We have also knight f6 uh, and only now bishop g7, king uh, g7 and rook a to c1. So centralizing the rooks, uh, now if any of the c file or d file are open, uh, then white pieces are already, uh, you know, on their positions. We have queen c7 and now knight h4, uh, asking to exchange the light squares bishops as well. And this bishop has nowhere to go, cannot avoid that. Uh, so this is why we have rook a to b8 uh, bishop e4 knight e4 with the attack on the queen so queen e3 attacking the knight so knight retreat to f6 and now queen g5 so we have very nice a uh, threat the knight can jump to the f5 as the pawn on g6 is pinned so we have king h8 at unpinning but also h6 is not protected now so queen h6 very nice position for the queen uh, this knight has to stay of course on f6 for now we have rook f to c8 and now knight f3 heading to g5 uh, we have king g8 now defending um, f7 as this knight would also uh, attack the pawn on the on the f7 and now we have b3 so so stabilizing the, the pawn structure, we have a6 preparing b5 uh, and now knight g5 as planned. Uh, we have queen d8 now making a space for the rooks. Uh, we have knight f3, Taimur Rajabov saying, okay, I won the first game and if you don't want to be knocked out from the tournament, you have to be one who starts to attack. Uh, so we have queen d7, king g2 improving the position of the king. Uh, so the queen cannot come to the h3 if this uh, queen is remaneuvered somewhere else. Uh, and now we have queen e6. So um, Daniel Dubov says, okay, uh, I'm gonna bring the queen to the game. For now, the pawn on the uh, e2 is the attacked. So we have rook d2 defending and now queen e4 pinning the knight. 
So king f1, unpinning, uh, and now we have rook c7. So Daniel Dubov wants to uh, double the rooks, and now he gonna decide where to do it. Maybe on the on the b file, uh, maybe on the c file, and then um, the c file can be open. We don't know it yet. Uh, we have rook d3 because the queen is now on the e4. So maybe it's worth to try to uh, catch that queen. Uh, we have queen f5 saying, okay, uh, I always can escape if needed uh, and now we have king g2 saying okay uh, would you dare to pin the knight again and Daniel Dubov said okay I can do that uh, and now we have king f1 and threefold repetition is of course good for uh, Taimur Rajabov uh, so we have rook b to c8 so now double the rook on the uh, on the c file and now of course the plan is to pick up this pawn and then maybe play something like b5 uh, maybe d5 and then this rook would be very very, very dangerous. Uh, for now we have d5, so cutting the escaping route for the for the queen, uh, and now maybe the rook can come to e3, it's not dangerous yet, uh, as the queen has um, the ways to escape, uh, but uh, Daniel Dubov has to be very, very careful. Uh, we have b5, h3, taking away the square on g4, uh, and now instead of queen f5, which of course is the best move in the position, just the queen can escape to d7 we have rook b8 so Daniel Dubov doesn't care about his queen uh, what's the point now we have g4 and the thing starts to be very dangerous how you gonna uh, prevent the move like uh, rook e3 it's very dangerous because if black for example try to play something like maybe uh, b4 a5 uh, and then push the pawn and that would be the simple plan rook e3 traps the queen but there is the way to save the queen uh, but have to suck sacrifice the piece and knight g4 with the attack on the on the queen would be the way to go uh, but of course the the knight is lost and now uh, even after rook e4 the queen yes can escape cannot take the rook uh, just be aware that that would be disaster because now we would have the checkmate in next two moves so uh, of course you cannot take that rook but rather uh, queen h5 that would be forced uh, or or maybe bring the, the queen to d7 but then we're gonna have these mating ideas and that would be uh, that would be lost of course uh, but still uh, you have uh, white with the one extra knight and these pawns are, are pretty much ugly gonna be lost so white of course have winning position but Daniel Dubov have another idea here and he played e5 so very interesting move and what is the idea? The idea is if rook e3 then the queen actually can come to f4 uh, and now uh, probably after exchanging uh, this rook cannot stay on the on the semi-open e file. All the squares actually uh, are covered here so uh, there is no problem. So rook uh, d3 uh, and then black can play on the on the open semi open d file and point on the e2 and also the pawn on f4 uh, would be really a torn in the position uh, as it controls e3. So uh, that would be definitely a weakness. So very nice idea. Uh, Taimur Rajabov doesn't like it so he plays d takes on e6 and now we have queen e6 uh, creating the weakness on d6. Now, uh, we have, of course, queen f4, so uh, attacking this weakness, and now knight e8, defending. Uh, we have also rook e3, now attacking the queen, so queen d7, and now knight g5. So the knight starts to uh, be quite dangerous. Maybe the knight can jump, for example, to e4 uh, to put even more pressure on the, on the d6. Uh, but uh, Daniel Dubov said, OK, I don't like my weakness here. So let's just eliminate that. So we have d5. C takes on d5, queen takes on d5, and now king g1, as this was the checkmate. So as you already see, after queen d5, we have the checkmate in one move. So you have to be very careful when you play against 
against Daniel Dubov. Uh, this, you know, single uh, threat also sometimes can be very, very dangerous. King G1, of course, is forced. And now C4. So the queen also uh, helps to advance with the pawns. Uh, we have B takes on C4, B takes on C4. And this is the hope for Daniel Dubov for the win. He creates the passed pawn. Uh, but now we have knight E4. So the idea is very simple. The knight gonna head to C3 and this pawn cannot be pushed anymore. Um, so this is, you know, still perfect scenario for Teimur Rajabov. Uh, if you play something like queen D8, you cannot imagine that you're gonna make any progress with this pawn. Uh, also look at this uh, pawns controlling the squares. So there are no outposts possible. The rook cannot jump there and so on. So that would not be the greatest idea. This is why uh, Daniel Dubov wants to transpose uh, this pawn into some activity. And he played rook c to b7. Uh, of course, the pawn is lost, so we have rook c4. Uh, and now you cannot take the, the, the rook, of course, because uh, it's defended by the tactic. Uh, knight with the check and uh, discover attack on the queen. Uh, so this is why we have rook b1 with check and now king h2 uh, and now queen d1 so out of nowhere daniel dubov creates another checkmating threat and it looks like extremely dangerous uh, however Taimura Jabov now have the escaping route so for the king so we have king g3 uh, and here daniel dubov plays h5 very aggressive now he want to destroy uh, the pawn uh, shelter for the king and and then maybe try to bring another pieces to the game because the knight is not playing and this rook is not playing um, at all. This rook actually is defending the 8th rank as the rook, for example, can come to c8, uh, which, uh, you know, uh, would pin the, the knight uh, and that could be very dangerous. But now Temur Rajabov, look at this. Rook f3 counter attack and pointing now on f7. So what to play as black? This is the huge, huge question. Because of course you can defend that, uh, that pawn, you can defend this way. Uh, you also can bring the rook, but that means you don't have any counter play. Your piece is not gonna attack anymore and white gonna get the initiative and rather win the game. Uh, black would have no chances for winning. So Daniel Dubov plays his last chance move f5, now sacrificing the pawn and winning one tempo. So we have g takes on f5 and now queen h1 uh, saying, okay, maybe you want to take my pawn. However, this is a very nice trap. If the pawn is taken, that would be terrible blunder because now we have rook g1. And now look at this. The king has only one way to go, king h4, and now rook g4 actually wins the queen and not much choice here uh, queen g4 h takes on g4 and of course uh, black have the queen for the rook so uh, daniel dubov would win that game this is why king h4 is forced uh, and now rook g1 however now white have the move so there is not possibility of playing rook g4 immediately uh, and here we have very simple rook g3 which is enough order to protect the king however Taimur rajabov had a very nice winning uh, possibility knight f6 wins the game immediately because now whatever you do if you take with the knight uh, then we're gonna have queen b8 and, and then after king g7 uh, another rook gonna uh, join and then we're gonna have the checkmate on f8 uh, and if the knight is not taken and the king goes for example to f8 uh, the queen gonna jump um, to h6 with the check uh, and if king g7 then the knight can attack all also with the check and after rook e8 rook c7 can come uh, also to the game if the king goes to the to the f6 then of course the queen gonna jump uh, to the to the game if the if the rook goes for example to e6 uh, that's gonna be the checkmate in couple of moves uh, and if king g8 uh, the same story but this way queen c4 king h8 uh, and now of course you don't have time to to play all of this but rather queen d4 first and then a checkmate on g7 um, anyway uh, however Ra Taimur Rajabov missed that and he played uh, you know safety first 
first rook g3 uh, we have rook b8 trying to bring the rook to the to the fifth rank uh, but Taimur Rajabov didn't see that it's gonna work it's not that dangerous because this rook doesn't support anything uh, maybe if the if the if the pawn is taken but it's still I don't see anything here uh, and here uh, Taimur Rajabov just simply also doesn't see anything so rook c8 and in this position Daniel Dubov resigned so he lost the second game that day and all together four games in the row so last four games were won by Taimur Rajabov Taimur definitely on fire uh, Daniel Dubov resigned here because uh, he cannot actually defend the knight if he bring the king uh, somewhere here then we gonna have this cover attack by the queen this way uh, so for example king f7 uh, f takes on g6 and then uh, doesn't really matter we're gonna have the checkmate this way or another uh we can have the checkmate here or in the center of the board uh it doesn't really matter uh rook e8 is coming now uh king d4 and after rook d3 this of course is checkmate as the knight uh, covers c5 and uh, c4 is covered by the queen so uh it's not even possible rook f5 with the attack on the queen also doesn't work because now we're gonna have rook e8 with the check and after let's say king f7 uh knight d6 with the check uh, with defense on the on the rook uh, with the check and with the attack on this rook uh, nothing can be done here king g7 and now knight f5 with check uh, and again this this pawn of course is is pinned so king f7 and after rook e7 uh, king f6 we would have the checkmate this way so this is why after rook c8 daniel dubov resigned and i would like to show you all the semi-finals what just happened here we go Taimur Rajabov won both of the games so he won the second mini match uh, even if daniel dubov win um, the last two games that would be only a draw and he lost the first mini match so Taimur Rajabov would won anyway so after two games it ended and the same story we had uh, Levon Aronian who won against Maxim Vasil Lagraf in final we're gonna have Temur Rajabov against Levon Aronian and we're gonna also have the match for the third place where Daniel Dubov is going to play against Maxim Vasil Lagraf so if you like this video press like if for some reason you don't like it press unlike and if you don't want to miss other games from the Earthings Masters press subscribe smash the bell button thanks for watching and See you in the next one.